Welcome back all you disc golfers out there. You are watching your 2021 Vintage Open presented by Dynamic Discs. My name is Kevin Jones and joining me today to present you your final round coverage is Thomas Gilbert. Thomas, how are you doing, man? Kev, I'm doing great. I mean, I am so excited to watch this round. The first two rounds have been so exciting so far. We got Calvin Heinberg, James Conrad, Gavin Rathbun, and Nico LaCastro. Yes, I think the front nine is going to tell a lot about this battle that we are about to see. James Conrad coming off of a 1093 rated round. He shot 14 under. That's going to be a course record probably for a little while. Today's conditions are going to play very harsh. We've got a bunch of wind coming from all directions at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Hole one going to be playing probably the most difficult that it's been all week long. Um, it's 495 feet with this creek that's out of bounds to clear at about 450 feet. Today we're dealing with a straight headwind, so it's going to make things very hard for a bird. Yeah, absolutely. These guys are probably going to take their most overstable driver and just kind of hammer it. Maybe disking down to a fairway just to avoid that creek at all costs. But uh, yeah, let's see what Calvin Heimberg has for us lined up. Lane a little bit wider, maybe just to keep it on that hyzer a little bit longer. But that's going to be a bit shorter than me might have liked, but it should have a relatively easy up and down there. I wish I knew what his exact game plan was on the shot right there. It seemed like he was going to try to throw it pretty hard, but he uh, threw it way out to the right, never coming close to the creek. His upshot, honestly, would be pretty difficult from there with the, the amount of wind that facing yeah that's very true James nice angle control here probably something like a mention or maybe uh, one of the fast King off third. drivers from MVP. And with a fast and overstable from because Illinois. so much headwind on this hole we're gonna see all players opt for their fastest most overstable disc so there's no chance of turning over and getting out of control Gavin Rathbun here been throwing the disc off the tee incredibly good so far in this tournament. He's going to need that today, especially in the wind, to make a push. Yep, definitely. He's going with that more overstable PD2 in his bag. And that's in a decent position. Yeah, a little bit short there. Going to be faced with about 190 to 200 foot upshot with a straight head 20 miles per hour at least. Last in the box, we got Nico Castro. Looking as fly as ever with the bright colors. Love that uniform. I'm a little biased there just because I love bright colors as well. I think that looks great. That shot right there, not very great. Pretty short, not much distance covered. He's going to probably be the first to throw here. Nico going to go for a sidearm here. He's doing that to try to keep the top of the disc facing the wind, just as it's done there. So. The disc isn't going to rise up very much on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very smart play there. That's that's going to be common, especially there from the right side. Gavin going to a knee to try to keep it low here and cut through the wind. Oh, my goodness. And just a little bit too low. Hopefully that curled up before that OB creek. Going to a knee is something I believe that he's trying to do in order to to expose the bottom of the disc to the wind in order to not get slammed down super far. Kind of be throwing at an upward angle. That's what Paige Pierce does on her putts. Mm -hmm. Calvin chucking his overstable Firebird pretty nicely up there, putting on the tail one side. Average upshot from James. He's going to be faced with a difficult putt to secure a three on this starting hole. Fortunately, Gavin was not out of bounds there on that shot. Going sidearm from a really close distance, though. Those are touchy. And here he's going to be faced with a 25-footer, almost straight headwind. A really good effort there by him. Just a little bit on the weak side of the chains. And in the headwind, that's not going to usually catch. James is tester putt about similar distance. And a great right side catch there by him. That was a very nice putt, using that to his advantage. 
And Nico going to opt for that spin putt. He's been practicing that putt so well and is really executing it right now. A nice cleanup there by Calvin. Really taking his time, making sure that he focuses up to drain those putts. Yeah, a highlight of that for Calvin was going to be that Firebird upshot from only 190, 200 feet. Uh, it was well played, though, into the headwind. Got a shout out real quick. There was only one two on hole one, the third hardest hole of the course. That's GT Hancock throwing in from the fairway. I was on the card, got to see it myself. Crazy shot. Nice wow. two, man. Yeah, what a highlight. Hole two is a much easier hole. This is a par three at 295 feet. The difficult part about this hole is the slight slope from right to left going down, making sure that your backhands are going to have a little bit more skip in them. Um, there's also a huge headwind on this hole today. Angle control looks good from Calvin, but that can get out of control. It doesn't. It's a good, nice little check up there. He's going to be loving that putt. James looking to go with something similar over stable fairway. Now yeah, these guys might swing it a little bit wider than usual just to kind of uh, help get that push back left at the end and kind of play that skip. James flexing something really nice and looks to come up maybe just short of the circle but not too too bad. This hole coming in as the second easiest hole on the course, so everybody trying to score birdie on this hole, regardless of the wind. Yeah, definitely not too much trouble to really get into. There's not really that much out of bounds that comes into play, unless you go way left onto the road or perhaps long. But most shots here are either going to be inside circle or kind of have some kind of easy upshot just to kind of pitch under the basket for par. Gavin keeping it nice and low. That's going to prevent some skips there. And he's going to set up there right about 25 feet or so. All of these putts are going to be difficult here with all the wind that we're facing right now. So this will be interesting. Nico's, this would be incredible. Oh, my gosh. Playing that really, really well. That is a really tough putt to run in that wind. And he did it nearly perfectly. Yeah, he displayed a lot of touch over the disc there. James as well trying to give it like a soft spin to kind of just let the wind carry it to the basket. But that's a good way to kind of run these tricky headwind putts. No. no. Oh, that is brutal. It sure is. Just after taking a double bogey on the first hole, he does as good of a job as he can on the second hole and just gets straight up robbed. You hate to see it. Calvin taking advantage, giving me a little bit more stabby of a putt there at the end, getting a little bit more spin from his hand. That's going to help kind of cut through that wind. Yeah, as a player, what Gavin just had to go through right there is the hardest thing to go through as a player. You get knocked down on the first hole, and you try to get back up, and you get knocked down once again, taking the par on the pretty easy hole there. Would love to see Gavin answer on hole three or four here. That would be a great comeback. Hole three is a really difficult par four. Honestly, if you're getting a birdie on this hole a day, you're doing something incredibly right because that is hard to do. Um, you don't want to go high today because there's so much wind going on up there. I mean, we're talking 30 miles an hour gusts coming straight at you, so people are just going to try to cover as much ground as possible on this tee shot. Yeah, Calvin looking like he's going with his most overstable destroyer. Curious to see if he'll choose that right side or possibly try to throw it up the left no he's gonna go for that that right side catches a little bit of cabbage but so much power that he just absolutely crushes through that and that looks like a decent position it is a great position pretty hard to attack the green from there just the way that the hole is shaped but he's looking great for a four yeah, and james as well going with something 
pretty overstable, getting pushed by that wind, just getting that underside of the disc exposed at all will push it over to the right. And but it looks like it has just enough stability to fight back left at the end. Nico, I'm sure, has plenty of discs overstable enough to fight this wind. Let's see what line he takes. Good angle commitment there, throwing it up on Annie with something overstable. Doesn't quite have enough time to fight back, but that's really the error to decide on because that left OB can definitely come into play if you don't turn it over. That's exactly right, Thomas. That's pretty much what all of our players here are trying to avoid. The last thing they want to do is take an extra stroke due to out of bounds, so everybody's hanging out way far to the right side of this fairway here. Yeah, James playing it to the right again. We have that OB on the left. Unfortunately, catches a little bit of that tree there that's going to knock him down probably about 60 feet shorter than he might have been able to get. But Gavin looks like he's throwing a nice line drive here, keeping it low. And, wow, that skips up there relatively close to the basket. Honestly, that was a really good shot from Gavin there. I mean, coming in on the exact desired line there. Let's see how aggressive Calvin Heimberg wants to get this early in the round. Going line drive straight at it. Unbelievable shot. Absolutely. That's exactly how you want to play the hole on a day like today with so much wind. Calvin sneaking it just inside to circle's edge is the best you could ask for with a backhand going through that gap. If you want to park the hole, you've got to go high over the trees, and that's not an option today. Nico with the furthest drive of the bunch, really committed up shot, no flare. I mean, he's he'll be 45 feet. Mm -hmm. And honestly, today, getting just getting a jump putt approach is going to be key for these guys. It'll really take that pressure off and make this hole easier for par because having a touchy shot like this through the wind is going to put some extra stress on that these players don't need. You're right about that, Thomas. Gavin, getting a little sneaky through the trees there, but that's going to be a nice, easy tap in from there. Nico faced with some headwind here. And he oh does my it. Gosh. <laughs> wow. What a pot there by Nico Castro. Man. Wow, wow. When he does something crazy, he's always looking straight at the camera. He's <laughs> like, that's right. That was me. I did that. Let's go. Man, such good spin and touch to that wind, keeping it nose up to ride up into the chains. What skill and precision. Yeah, he is so good at that little float shot. It's an underrated technique in the game. Calvin, could he get a birdie himself as well? This is from just outside the circle. Mm. Just drifting a little bit right of the basket, but that didn't go too far past. Here's James for his par cleanup. That little backstop that James is kind of standing on right there is, is great for Nico's uh, run attempt. Mm -hmm. It catches anything that goes right by the basket and pretty much leaves you at 15 feet max with a tailwind today especially. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's a good... Good thing to keep in mind, these guys are definitely going to try to play to that tailwind side of the basket on majority of these upshots. That's going to bring us to hole four, averaging at 3.31 strokes. This is a par three at 380 feet. This hole moves from left to right the entire time. Uh, the left side of the fairway, though, is much more obscured than the right side. The right side creates a few more opportunities to get up and down. A lot of times this hole plays as a two-shot hole because it's hard to get all the way up by the basket. Usually you're having to make something crafty on your second shot in order to get a par here. Nico showed us an incredible roller yesterday. It was honestly a pretty similar line. I think he brought it a little more um, inside. 
yesterday than today. He mm-hmm. ends up catching a tree, and he'll have he'll have some work to do to recover par. Yeah, this is also a very common play you'll see here from Calvin going with his more understable eagle. And, yeah, getting that nice turn into the gap. Wow, and that is really well executed. Maybe just a foot more to the left, and that would be parked. Yeah, great shot from Calvin. This is a shot I imagine James really good at. He is very strong in this little forced turnover category. Not his best effort there whatsoever. Uh, we'll see what he's got from there. If he's behind a tree, it's going to be interesting. Gavin going a little bit higher than the intended line. He's going to have to contest with some branches. Looks like it clipped something there. We'll see where he ended up finishing. Wow, James's drive ended up in a much better spot than I imagined. He's actually looking straight down the gap and right at the <laughs> basket, and he almost lasers it in there. Wow, what an executed throw there by James Conrad. Keeping it on line the whole way and really using that pad to his advantage. Gavin, nice pitch up, up and around. A little bit of an unfriendly roll, but he's probably going to be happy being inside circle. A little touch forehand from Nico coming up. Oh, he mm. does hit that tree, but not the biggest problem. He'll still be around 25 feet. Now that we are in the woods a little bit more, the wind is much less of a factor. It's still present because it's so strong out there. But, um... A little bit more predictable putts. Calvin trying to give it a little bid there, kind of ha taking advantage of the calmer conditions here in the woods, a little less um, action from the wind, and he can give that a good run knowing that he'll most likely be able to make whatever comeback putt he has. Although this is a big comeback putt here. For sure. And Calvin continuing his hot putter streak from yesterday. Nailing that putt absolutely center from about 28 feet. Yes. Great little spin putt there by Nico. Catching that right side and dropping into the basket. Hate to see it from Gavin. Just a touch off. He had a problem with the basket a couple holes ago, and I know how it feels. Sometimes you just don't trust it as much, and with that comes not trusting your stroke. Have you discovered disc golf yet? Get started on the right track with a prime starter set from Dynamic Discs featuring the Escape, Truth, and Judge. The Escape is a controllable driver that flies straight at low speeds and can handle enough power to get massive distance. The Truth is a straight flying mid-range for maximum control, and the Judge is our most popular putter trusted by our pros around the basket and off the tee. These starter set discs are made in our affordable prime plastic for a great price. We've got more discs, bags, and everything you need to get better at Dynamic Discs. And we're back. That last hole, hole four, playing as the sixth hardest hole on the course. Only saw one birdie in that final round. Seth Talbot, great birdie. Uh, this is hole five, going straight up the hill to the basket on top of the rock mound. Very rememberable hole out here at Old Post Park, designed by Matt Lloyd and Steve Bennett, great members of the Russellville disc golf community. And this event has been looking great so far. The course is looking immaculate. 
Yeah, absolutely. Really, really picturesque holes throughout the entire course. And this hole, right along with those holes, Nico trying to throw a flex forehand, catches a little bit high and drops to around circle two. Calvin got his Halo Destroyer in hand. He's going to try to flex it up that left side. Keeping it low, getting a bunch of skips, and man, that is going to be about 20 feet. Wow, Calvin kind of getting away with something there. You got to keep in mind on this hole, the rock fairway is going to really mess with skip plays. So Calvin got away with it there and scooted it right up to exactly where you want to be. James, height could be a problem here. And he ends up right in line with that tree. There are a few trees to beat late in the backhand's flight. They are crucial trees as well because if you hit those trees, you're pretty much dropping outside circle two. Gavin again with, going with that straight fairway driver. Oh, a nice shot. And it looks like, yeah, set on the hillside there. Hopefully that's right around 25 feet. Very common upshot that you'll see on this hole from Nico. Nothing too hard about this. Just wants to make sure he hits the gap and then land his disc flat on top of these rocks. Yep, looks, well, looks good as long as it stays up there. They usually do. Yeah, those rocks, as much as they will stop your skips, they also can help kind of prevent those roll away some of the times, but... With how sloped this green is, you can still see it sometimes. James from just outside circle two, so about 63 feet there. Up the hill, he hits some tree. And he's going to drop down to at least a little tester putt. Gavin some, from further than he would like to be, uh, but he's going to be off there. That's going to be a par for him. Go with a tricky putt up the hill. That snuck in there. He knows it, but that's all that matters. This is Calvin's tee shot right here. Yep. Looking to get a stroke on the card with this putt. And he does. Just clean little pitch putt into the basket, and that is going to be a nice birdie there for Calvin Heimberg. Solid clean up there by James. And here's Gavin to do the same. That's going to be a great birdie from Calvin there, creating a little bit of separation between him and second place. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Calvin Heimberg in the lead by five strokes today. I mean, shooting two under through five holes in this wind is all that Calvin needs and more. We see here on the leaderboard, nobody doing anything better than Casey White, four down through 14. Conditions are playing tough today. Hole six, the hardest hole on the course coming up next. It's also the most beautiful hole on the course as well as my favorite. This hole as well as the last couple holes and the next bunch of holes have been here since the beginning of Old Post's um, inception. So here we go. The play right here is to play a fast driver on a hyzer flip making sure that you get at least some turn out to the right um, and then hooking up very late down to the basket we saw gavin with an incredible shot yesterday yeah wow oh man look at this this is perfect around. from calvin oh my that's what i'm talking goodness. about wow he played that with very well a lot of hyzer with his halo destroyer out of the hand you can see it get flipped by that wind. We have a really strong headwind coming from right to left. It danced down to the right side of the fairway and then flexed back hard at the end, getting that finish and putting himself 20 feet away. Nico pulling it a little bit to the right there, going to catch that bush. That is a common play if you don't quite commit to your line up the gut. Yeah, hitting the gap is goal number one on this hole. Nico did get some separation from that crepe myrtle. That's going to help. James, this is a shot he specializes in as well. That's looking great. The wind is going to be messing with it, but that's what you want to see. Some late wow. hookup as oh, it yeah. flies down the hill. 
perfectly done from James Conrad. I oh, mean, just sitting now, it's out of his hands at this point. But yeah. that's how you play the shot, and he's got mm -hmm. a guaranteed par, so that's yep. great on the hardest hole. Gavin, let's see it. He did some magical things the first two days. Oh, oh. But that, that wind just shoves it down into that hillside, and it he, does. He's going to be disappointed with that. Yeah. As soon as the, the top of the disc was exposed, it just dropped just enough. He didn't give it enough height. Nico's kind of doing a similar thing, but overstable disc eventually gets brought back up, skipping right by the cameraman to a long area that's going to be outside of the circle and an uphill putt for his par save. But at least he has a putt for par after that drive. Okay, I've been hanging this a little bit wider, maybe a slightly slower disc. And oh, that just needs to sit down now. But this hillside really draws the discs down towards that lower edge. And he's going to be outside circle. Nico just safely pitching up to the basket. Not wanting to have to do any more kind of putting on this hole. James from the bushes here. Oh. oh. Good attempt there. Nice nose up putt in that wind. Nothing easy about this putt here from Calvin. Right to left wind. Man, and what a bonus birdie to pick up on the card here. That is going to really really kind of set the tone for this round if he just keeps picking up strokes like this it's going to be really hard to catch him honestly that is a massive momentum swing in calvin's favor getting through the hardest hole on the course with a birdie yeah and one of two people to birdie this hole today rick huber congrats on a great birdie as well who absolutely parked it wow very impressive shot there. Yeah, on a day like today, awesome birdie. Hole 7 is another great hole coming back up the hill. This is 345 feet, but it plays more like 380 to 400 feet. Heiser is definitely your recommended play. Height control is going to be really important. If it's too high, you'll find yourself skipping way far down the hill. And if it's too low, you'll be too high up on the hill. Calvin... This is good looking height. It might skip down the hill if it doesn't have the best action. But he's throwing a slower disc. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that was an eagle. That's the only thing that makes sense to my brain is that he's throwing an eagle there. And that was just great angle control as well as a display of power from him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That And some great little action there to kind of slow the disc down. But yeah, that comes with that, that touch that he's putting on it with that fairway driver. James going up a little bit high. This has got to kind of sit on this edge. Oh, my and goodness. <laughs> great reaction as well there from James. Getting a nice checkup onto the green. Keeping it high on the hill so it could kind of skip down into it. I bet that looked really good from the tee box. Mm -hmm. Nico opting for an overstable line. Actually not as overstable as I expected. He seemed to hit that one on a flat line, maybe slightly hyzer even. Problem is he put it too high up in the air, and it's going to skip down there to 45 feet, uphill putt with a difficult wind. Gavin looking like he's going with his PD2 again here, trying to just blast it up that right side gap. He likes to really commit with his power on this shot. That's great line. Flipping up to flat and, yeah, getting in. Decent skip, a little bit of an unfortunate roll down that hill, and that's going to unfortunately be a putt from outside circle. Mm. Good run there by Nico. Again, using the spin to kind of control the speed on his disc. Yeah, and as well as that left to right wind to bring his disc straight down. Mm hmm. Gavin's going to need to put this one way high up in the air if he wants to have a chance of making it. And oh. what did I say? Man, Gavin not able to catch a break today. He's just getting rocked by the course, honestly. The wind is just 
it's just so unpredictable. I mean, the last hole he threw a perfect up shot and rolled to 40. Yeah, Calvin just making this course look too easy. The, these are not easy conditions. You can tell how much the wind is ripping just by looking at James's shirt. James having to go with a much faster putt than his normal pace, and he executes that really well, jabbing his putt there for birdie. Yeah, Calvin is just taking control of the tournament right now. He's got a pretty great lead going on right now but a lot of holes we're about to start right here a lot of holes are very birdieable but just not that easy so a really important time is coming up for calvin gotta be gotta keep getting birdies otherwise it's possible that other people start catching you mm -hmm. and we're gonna start with our first very birdieable hole hole eight also got to shout out The Disc Barn, thediscbarn.com. Thank you guys for supporting us. Please go check out their website. Hole 8 is a par 3 at 250 feet. This one, the optimal play is to go around the left side of the fairway with something overstable on a flick line. Calvin showing us with a firebird, and he catches the mm. one tree that you want to miss. Yeah, really, the, the play is to flex just in front of it, just around that tree, ideally just around it. But, yeah, unfortunately, catching that, he's going to have probably just a short upshot into yeah. the green. Easy par from there. Now it's time for our competitors to gain a stroke on the leader. James opting for that right side fairway. I love that play, but it takes some great precision, which he shows us. Yeah, throwing that disc very well. I think that might be his new signature disc, the Nomad, and throwing that very well right off the bat. Taking a nice little skip just from outside circle. That wind or that hillside will filter it down to the screen. And yeah, great, great shot there. Even himself with a park job. Nico's play here is going to look similar to Calvin's. Overstable flex line with the forehand. Needs to get back quickly. So overstable that it does well in front of that last tree on the left side of the fairway. Pretty good shot. Not as much ground play as he would like, though. Gavin looking to do the same play. He has his Glow FD3 in his hand. Putting on a little bit of turn, flexing back nicely. Just got to sneak under these branches. And, oh man, just not getting the breaks that he really needs to be getting right now. And that's going to leave him with a circle's edge putt. Hopefully can catch that one for his birdie. Ooh, Calvin nice. perhaps giving a little bit of a run there with his Firebird. He, he can do that because there is that hillside on the right. So, honestly, not a bad time to be doing that. Wow. There we go. boy, Gavin. Nothing is going to come easy on a day like today. Gavin, I mean, just trying to scrounge a birdie together, and there's that 28-footer with the difficult wind. He jams it. Nico as well. He's got a right-to-left wind there, just keeping the disc flat and cruising it in towards the basket. Just enough height on it. James with the beautiful tee shot, dropping in a birdie. That's great to see. So Calvin messed up on this tee shot, and he opened the door, and three players on our card got a stroke on him. Yeah, Calvin going to be disappointed. That's one of the easiest holes in the course, if not probably the, about the third easiest hole in the course, if I had to guess. Definitely a one you want to pick up, but good on the rest of the card for getting that stroke on Calvin. All right, and now this is hole nine, final hole of our front nine, 365 feet. I call it the fishbowl hole, but some actual true history for you guys, thanks to Mark Likens, is that this used to be an old rock quarry in the 1950s or so. So cool story behind this hole. It's a very interesting ground shape. James finding himself going long. We do have this tailwind going on right now. So it's easy for that to happen, but I tell you, it's also easy for your disc just to drop straight down into like 50 feet or 40 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these guys are definitely trying to play it above that hillside, kind of either getting it just kind of on circle's edge flag and getting that little check up into the green. Nico, this is going to need to raise up. And 
just a tiny bit low there from him. Honestly, not a bad shot, but just maybe forcing over a little too down. I feel like that's what happened to a lot of people's shots on this hole on today's on today's round with the way that the wind was playing. Nico almost got the skip to get there. Gavin's going to be doing the same thing, I think. Oh, Ooh, but it catches. Wow. Wow. He caught a little <laughs> wind draft there or something. There you go. That's what you want to see for Gavin, giving himself an inside-the-circle look for birdie. Two in a row. I like this camera angle here, getting a look at how straight this disc is moving. Gets that little bit of drop there at the end. That's going to leave him just around circle's edge. But Calvin's been on with the putter so far this round. Let's see if he can capitalize once again. James back into the headwind here. That's going to be low. Those are putts we really want to see James make if he's going to make a run for the title here. Nico from the with the wind behind him here. Let's see if he plays it up and lets it drop in. Uh, hmm. I think that was the intended play. Yeah, definitely. Just slight misrelease. Even just with these guys, the the slight timing of a putting can be so touchy sometimes that just a little half step can mess it up. Big time putt from Calvin Heimberg, maintaining his lead right there with authority. Yeah, such clean spin and really like puts it on line with the basket unlike anyone else, and, and he's just making those putts look so routine. Gavin here to get two in a row. Yes, sir. Yes, good recovery there by Gavin. Hopefully that gets him bouncing back on the right stroke. Yeah, I'm ready for Gavin to have some, like, park jobs or something. A nice yeah. stress-free birdie for him would be exactly what he needs. Everything's coming really hard for him right now. And as Nico taps in that par, that's going to wrap it up for the front nine of this final round. Definitely some exciting action going on. This wind is making the conditions really tough, but definitely some separation going on here. And Calvin Heimberg just demolishing the front nine, shooting five under. That is pretty unheard of in these conditions. James doing best he can, getting two under. And then Gavin and Nico kind of bouncing around there, keeping themselves in it, but definitely going to need to do something magical on the back to catch up. Yeah, I mean, all the credit to James here. He's playing a great bogey-free round right now, but Calvin coming in with five, five birdies on that front nine is just, that's a pace that's very hard to beat. If he keeps that up, he's unstoppable without a doubt. We will find out, though, on the back nine coverage. So hope you guys are enjoying this coverage brought to you by GK Productions. I'm Kevin Jones. I'm with Thomas Gilbert. We will see you guys on the back nine coverage.